So nearly one year after its announcement, Adobe finally released the version 1.0 of Adobe Photoshop for the iPad. It was announced today at the Adobe Max conference. So although it definitely came out with lots of caveats, such as it's focusing on common tasks, it doesn't really have all of the features to be called the real Photoshop just yet. And plus many other things, I definitely feel like it's important to make a quick review about the good and the bad things so far on Adobe Photoshop for the iPad. My name is Leo and you're watching Ghost Paper, so now let's get started. All right, now that we're here on the iPad, let's start by launching Adobe Photoshop. And basically, once you launch Photoshop, this is the welcome screen and it's something very similar to what we see, for example, on Adobe Fresco. This is, of course, part of the ideation behind uh, Adobe, which tries to create a cohesive look whenever they are launching apps that come from the same family, so the Adobe Creative Cloud apps. So here on the welcome screen, you can take a tour, you can start by importing an image, and you can also see what's next for Photoshop. And that's uh, something we're gonna talk later down in this video. You can also create a new illustration. You can learn a little bit more about Photoshop. You can also uh, work with your cloud documents and you can also even see uh, some of your deleted documents. This is just something that I was just testing a few hours ago. But what's cool is that you'll be able to actually use some of these presets here, such as you know print files, uh, files for screen, and finally film and video. So let's start with, uh, let's actually do a screen one. We're just gonna do an HD, HD with 72 DPI and sRGB. So uh, by creating this new file, this is the structure of Adobe Photoshop. Again, it's quite similar in my opinion to Adobe Fresco. You got the tools on the left side and you got your controls on the right side of the canvas. So let's actually start talking about the good things. So the good things that I found so far on Adobe Photoshop, one actually comes from the post on the official blog. That is actually Photoshop is being built with the same code base as the real Photoshop, as the Photoshop version on the desktop. So I do like the fact that the, uh, the, start, the starting principle of this application follows the same as the desktop application its premise, its base, and its core feature actually comes from the real Photoshop, quite possibly not with the same performance, possibly not opening the same files as you can open on a desktop version with lots of RAM, lots of computing power from like a really good desktop computer, but still with, with its core principles following the same between the desktop and the app version. Number two, uh, I do feel like some of the choices here in the UI, uh, actually Adobe is actually hitting the mark quite well. For example, I do like that we have two versions or two options here to actually look our, at our layers uh, panel. There's this first option, and in this option, it's quite of a simple way of looking at your layers panel. So here you have your layer, you have one layer at the moment. If I click to make a, a layer mask, you see that uh, you get a slider control here, meaning that this now is your layer mask. So probably if I paint with black, as I uh, probably guessed it, we're painting the alpha out or we are obscuring things out of our layer one. And you have the same uh, kind of a uh, principal controls that we see on Procreate. Uh, two finger tap to uh, undo, three finger tap to redo uh, any kind of action here on the canvas. So what I liked about this uh, layer panel here is that we have the basic version, which works really well for um, something like an application on an iPad, as well as a more detailed version of the layers panel, where once again, I can add layers ma uh, layer mask that sits on the right side. I can click here on the effects and filters. I can look at more options here for that specific layer and so on and so forth. So I do find that the organization of the UI so far here on Photoshop is actually uh, not not bad. It's actually done in a really nice way. And you can hit the help button at any time and you can see uh, more tutorials. You can take the tour. You can view the gestures list. We have two finger tap for undo and three finger tap for redo, just like Procreate. You can move uh, panels. So just quickly showing what that does. You can move panels around such as this one. So you can keep it on the right side if you prefer. Uh, let's keep going here. You can review more options. So what you can do is with one tap, you review uh, the first option, which is just like the color of the brush, uh, the brush size and the alpha. But if I double tap here, 
you go into uh, the different kind of brushes that you can select. And you can do that with any tool that have that little arrow, the little arrow pointing to the lower right here. So if I tap once, I see the size of the, my eraser. And if I double tap, I go into the uh, options of brushes for my eraser tool. Also, what's interesting to see is that they still have that dial button, the same that we saw on uh, Adobe Fresco. And uh, here, what I thought it was uh, actually quite interesting is that we have a primary action. So once you hold, let, let, let's just say if I hold my finger here on the canvas, I see that move constraint is now selected for this element right here. But if I move to the outer edge of that ring, it is a secondary option that's now saying duplicate. And now by saying duplicate, I'm basically duplicating this layer here. So I'm just gonna duplicate this layer so you can see what it's actually doing. As you can see, I'm duplicating this layer that already had some artwork. So anyways, it's nice to see that for every uh, tool here, we have a primary action and a secondary action with the dial. And finally, for every layer here, you can press the, uh, the layer properties and you can see the blend modes, you can see some of the effects. And once you open some of these tabs, it does say that this feature is not supported, supported on this device just yet, meaning that you can open a Photoshop file which has effects applied from a desktop version, but you probably won't be able to edit them. So um, lastly, on the right side here, you can add more layers. You can hide the layers by just clicking on the eye icon. You can add layer masks. You can unchain the layer mask from the layer, so you can move the layer but not move the mask. Similar feature that we see in Photoshop as well. And finally, we have some adjustments. At the moment, we only have Gaussian Blur and Invert, which really fa uh, you know, falls in comparison to the desktop version, but hopefully this uh, will have more effects really soon. So now let's talk about the bad things. And again, I feel like this review of Photoshop will be quite similar to Adobe Fresco. What Adobe calls here as their version one, as their first version, for many people, it's not even called a finished application, a finished app. And that goes into when you click on filters and adjustments, you really only have at the moment Gaussian Blur and Invert. When you go back into the Home button here and you click on what's coming next for Photoshop, there's a lot of things here that are quite basic, quite basic uh, tools that we need in order to work on our illustrations or art or photos or anything. You can make, you can't rotate your canvas at the moment. You don't have shapes and paths. You can't bring your own brushes. You can't adjust curves. There's no color swatches. You can't bring your own fonts. There's no smart objects. There's no grids and guides. And even more, they're still coming over to this version of Photoshop as an application to the iPad. So really what it comes down to is that if you're a new user, if you don't have a subscription already to Creative Cloud, it makes you actually start using Creative Cloud and start paying for Creative Cloud, depending of course on what plan that you actually have, but it makes you actually pay for Creative Cloud for an application that still has many features yet to come. And uh, if for a lot of people, this does sound like you're paying for their, um, you know, for the development of that app before it's even ready to come out with more features or at least the features that you need to. So if you are an existing user of a, a Creative Cloud user, of course, you can then download Photoshop, you can download Fresco, and you're already using that experience on your desktop. And you're gonna be working with these files, with the now uh, files called PSDC, which will be cloud files. And it's really cool how you can start something on Fresco, take it to the Photoshop version here on the iPad, and then even further, take it to your desktop version. But this idea of using apps, uh, V1 apps, they are not completely ready just yet. It's really creating a divide here in the design and illustration community, at least for you know people who are against actually using applications in this way that they're, they're paying for the um, subscription while there's still so many features yet to come. And even the fact that still, if we had to morrow these features added on to Photoshop for the iPad and you didn't have a Creative Cloud subscription, you will be paying $13.49 a month just for using Photoshop on your iPad. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. And if you did, a like would be super appreciated. As well as let me know in the comment section down below, how do you feel about Photoshop for the iPad? Do you feel like it's important to see the evolution of apps actually coming for the iPad? Do you think that this is important for the future of iPad and digital illustration? Or do you think that we're still not quite there yet? 
in order to actually use the iPad as a professional tool for digital illustration. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below, as well as make sure to hit the subscribe button for more reviews, tips and tricks, speed paint videos, and that is all to make you a better digital illustrator. Also, I'm gonna leave in the right side of the video here my review for the Adobe Fresco app. And if you haven't seen that one yet, you should definitely check that out as, it's, uh, as it is part of the Adobe family. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Ciao.